shout and praise for Jesus this morning. Let's see this out with the passion. Come on. Now all of my things I will turn into praise. Shake off this paradise. I sing out your name. Of victory, this I will dance out in tears. I will crush this supportment. Hey, go!
I want you to close your eyes with me this morning and um, I want you just to take a big deep breath come on I want you to raise your hands to heaven Just thank God for his grace. Come on, find your life, find your joy in him today. Find your purpose, find your hope in his goodness, in his grace. Jesus, we worship you. Glory to you, Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. We're going to sing this one more time, turn your eyes upon Jesus, because I just want you to refocus today. I just feel like the Lord said, today is a day 
to refocus. Refocus your attention, refocus your eyes, refocus your heart, refocus your priorities, refocus the direction, refocus. Because when you focus in on him, when you really, really press in and your eyes are focused on Jesus, the King of glory, Jesus, our great high priest, Jesus, the one that is worthy to be praised, the one who is worthy to be honored, Jesus, the one who is worthy of worship and glory. When you press in to him and you refocus your eyes, it changes your entire perspective. It changes your entire world. It changes the way you see and you do life. Come on. I want you to sing this with passion. I want you to sing this with purpose. I want you to sing this like it matters today because Jesus, Jesus matters. Come on. good I love that line in the light of his glory and grace I can't tell you how many times I just I'll, I'll feel heavy I'll feel tired I'll feel weak I'll feel overwhelmed but you get in the light of his glory and his grace and it feels like those things are just so small and they just, they don't, they don't have the same power over you anymore because his light, his glory, his grace overpowers all the things of this world and gives you grace and strength to overcome. Amen? Come on. Come on. Can you lift up a shout to the Lord today? He is so good. He is so faithful. Hey, we love you. So glad you're here today. We're, we're doing things just a little bit different today. Uh, number one, we have no lights because technology is crazy sometimes. Can I get an amen from somebody? Uh, the other thing is we're going to have a worship song at the end of the message because it's going to make sense. We're going to talk about Jericho today. We're going to talk about some walls coming down today. And we're going to worship like we've never worshiped before at the end of service. Come on. So do me a favor, go grab somebody and tell them it's going to be the best day of church, okay? Just say, it's going to be the best day. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Elevate Church. 
It's going to be such a great day. I hope you can see me well enough. How many of you know, like, one day everything works perfectly, and then the next day you're like, why doesn't this work? This makes no sense. That's kind of our life sometimes. And, uh, but we're going to have a great day despite it. Amen? God's here. That's all that matters. Um, hey, we're going to worship the Lord. Man, can you just feel the presence in the house today? It's just such a strong, strong presence of the Lord today. I'm so excited about what I'm going to share and what the Lord has for you. But we're going to worship the Lord with our giving today. Amen? Amen. Come on. Thank you, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for trusting the Lord. Thank you for putting Him first. Thank you for helping us. I'm just so, so overwhelmed by just the outpouring of so many of our financial partners that we have really around the world that just keep reaching out to us and telling us, thank you. Thank you for being so faithful in this season. Thank you for putting Jesus first in this season. Listen, you are feeding children around the world. You're giving hope to people around the world because you are trusting the Lord and putting him first. Amen. Come on, a few ways we can give. There's online you can give. You can text Q, or text to give, use the QR code. But come on, let's trust the Lord and let's put him first today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to invest in what you're doing. What an honor to worship you. Lord, we don't worship you just with our lips. We worship you with our life. We worship you with our very best today, God. We give it to you because you are so good. And I ask that you would bless, bless, bless your people as they trust you and honor you today. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and give and then turn your attention to the screen. Elevate Church. My name is Jeanette. If this is your first time here with us, we want to connect with you. Located in the seat back in front of you is a QR code that you can scan to connect with us. Here at Elevate, we have lots of ways that you can get connected and grow in your relationship with Jesus. And here are a few things happening. Ladies, we are four weeks out from Crowned Conference and we could not be more excited. We have invited this year Pastor Christy Johnson from Fearless LA. She's coming all the way from Los Angeles here to Cincinnati and she has an amazing word for us. If you're not familiar with Pastor Christy, I encourage you go to Instagram, go to YouTube, look her up, listen to her speak. She is so full of wisdom and she is unashamed to bring the word of God and she's gonna bring it in a way that is going to touch you personally. I just know it. I know that Crown Conference is an investment, but I am telling you that your relationship with Jesus Jesus is worth this investment. God has something so personal that he wants to speak to you. So head on over to our website at elevate.city slash crowned. Get signed up. We love you. We'll see you there. On October 9th, we will be participating in the Cookies for Cops and our Fire Friends national event. If you would like to help show your support to our local first responders, bring in one dozen cookies, either homemade or store-bought from a bakery to show your appreciation. If you are ready to take the next step in your faith and you've never been water baptized, now is your opportunity. October 9th is Baptism Sunday at both services. It will be a day full of celebrating everyone who's taken the next step in their faith. If you would like to be water baptized, sign up today at elevate.city slash baptism. Be sure to stay connected with everything that's happening here at Elevate by visiting our website or following us on social media. We hope you enjoy the rest of service. Hey Elevate, I'm Pastor Matt. You know, at Elevate, God has been doing some amazing things inside of couples and families and individuals. 
And over the next couple months, we want to share some stories of what God is doing inside of lives here at Elevate. And so today we have Cole and McKenna Garretson, everybody. And we just want to have them share their story with us today. And I know that your story is uh, amazing about how God has just been transforming your uh, relationship with him, your marriage and finding community. So I wanna ask you this, all right? Coming to Elevate, what were you looking for in a church? And what did you guys find in Elevate that made you wanna make this your home church? Um, we were really looking for community. We wanted to be surrounded with people in the same season of life as us. We wanted to have friends who were young and married and understood that. And we've found that in all of our friendships and we've just encountered amazing marriages and made lifelong friends. From the time that you guys got married, you know, and, and as you're going to elevate and, and really growing in your relationship with Jesus, how has your marriage just been impacted through this growing in your relationship with Jesus? From the time that we've spent here, um, we were a part of the marriage groups before our marriage, and I think that really set us up for with, um, constantly we hear about firm foundations, and I really truly believe that um, whenever you have a marriage that is grounded in Jesus, that everything else uh, no matter what it is, uh, it's it's going to be a lot easier to get through. Yeah. Um, that's just something that we've both been talking about quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you guys are young, right? You guys just got married. Um, you kind of got all the all the freedom that you can have in marriage right now, yeah. you know. But but yeah, you guys choose to serve. You know, you guys choose to to get here for first service and and then uh, you know serve second service and give a good time and and so in your life you know what has really um, pushed you guys to do that you know because uh, I think a lot of young people you know especially uh, young couples young marriages they kind of want to do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. you know but what has really pushed you guys to serve and, and to give for me. Uh being able to serve and help out and uh, help out with things like momentum, um, it almost kind of fills up a part of my heart that you know, I wasn't a uh, part of, you know, any type of youth group whenever I was growing up. So it's it's absolutely amazing to be a part of something like that and watch these young people worship Jesus the way that they do and you know they're, they're learning who he is. I just wish that when I was a teenager, I had somebody to tell me the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful that I get to share that love with these kids and they get to learn it way sooner than I did. Guys, thank you so much for sharing. Sounds like God is just doing amazing things in your lives and I love that you guys are leaving a legacy here. You're making your imprint on God's kingdom here at Elevate. And just thank you so much for all that you do for us. All right. screen all the time now. <laughs> she said, please don't. <laughs> I love when we ask people to share stories. They're like, I'm going to be in front of the camera? And we're like, yes, it will not bite you. I promise you. People will cheer for you. I promise you. It'll be so good. Um, hey, you got a Bible? Pull out your Bible, okay? You got a Bible on your phone, pull out your Bible on your phone. If you don't, we'll have it on the screen for you. Go to the book of Joshua. Go to Joshua 6, but I'm going to share a quick verse out of Joshua 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua. Why does this matter? Because Moses had freed God's people out of slavery, out of bondage, okay? This is a big deal because we have to understand and we have to recognize that this is God's ultimate plan for our lives always is to free us, okay? He wants us free. He wants you free from, you know, being overly emotional. He wants us free from addiction. He wants us free from sickness and pain. He wants us free. So when we see God leading God's people out of bondage, we have to make sure we go, yes, that's for us. 
That's for our marriage. That's for our life. That's for me. I want to be free. And so God used Moses in a season. But how many of you know the story of Israel? They just, they just couldn't trust God. I mean, if you really want to boil, I mean, we, I mean, man, I could preach for 12 straight weeks on Israel. Boil it down. What is it? They just couldn't trust God. They couldn't trust God and walk in what? Faith. And I know we talk about faith a lot here at Elevate Church, but I believe faith is the key to victory in this life. They just couldn't trust the Lord. And so the Lord said, this generation's going to have to pass before I allow the next generation in. And how many of you say, you know what, I don't want to be a part of a generation that has to pass to see the next generation and see what God's going to do. I want to be a part of what God's going to do in the earth now. Verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come to lead these people, Israel, across the Jordan River into the land that I'm giving them. What land is that? It is their promised land. You know what I love about the promised land? If God had a promised land for them, he has a promised land for me. He has a promised land for you. He's got a promised land flowing with grace and blessing and his goodness that he has set up for your future. All right, Joshua 6, Joshua 6, verse 2. But the Lord said to Joshua, I've given you Jericho. Like my little wall today? I was like, how can we, how can we build a wall? I'm like, oh, moving boxes. Sometimes we just need a visual, right? Sometimes we just need to, we need to see it. And so God said, I'm giving you Jericho. It's this great, mighty city in the land that God had given them. But they had huge fortified walls. They had sealed the city. Massive walls so nobody could get in. I'm giving you Jericho, it's king, all of his strong warriors. And you'll, and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. On the seventh, the priests will walk around ahead of the yard carrying the ram's horn. And on the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times, and the priests blowing their horns. And when you hear the priests give one long blast of the ram's horn, all the people shout as loud as they can. And this is God's promise. And then, and then, And then the walls will collapse and the people will charge straight into the town. Come on, let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you. Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus, you are the one who reveals all truth. You are the one who reveals Jesus. You are the one who reveals God's word. You, Holy Spirit. So we ask now that you would come mightily and reveal God's plan for our life. Reveal God's future for our life. Reveal the walls that the enemy has built in our lives, but show us the path way to victory through Jesus Christ today. We love you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We thank you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give it up for the worship team. They're going to come back. It's going to be good. All right, y'all. Okay. How many know God's word is so important? Who is ready for this 90-day plan? Come on, I am so pumped. I'm so excited. We got hundreds of people signed up. I'm so jacked that you're gonna be reading the Bible over the next 90 days. You're gonna get filled with God's grace and strength, and it's gonna be awesome. But here's what I know. God's word is so important for what? For us to find victory, okay? To find victory. You know, it makes me so angry. I'm just going to be really honest with you, okay? I have so many people over the years in ministry tell me, what if God doesn't have victory for everybody? Right? Like, what, what if God doesn't want everybody healed? What if God doesn't want everyone to win? What if God doesn't have a promised land for everybody? What if God doesn't want everybody blessed? Amen? You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about 
that there's these doubters sometimes. And, and, and listen, it feels like sometimes when, when doubt creeps in, it is like cancer, okay? It just kills what God is trying to do, okay? Listen, doubt is just, is just, it's just so, so terrible. And, and doubt comes in. And, and I want to say something very publicly today, okay? If, if God didn't want us to win, what was the point of Jesus and the cross? What was the point? What, why did Jesus go through all that he went through? If we're just called to struggle in this life, if we're just called to get by, if we're just called to really just see a victory here or there placed in little spots in our life, if we're just called to never really get to our promised land, then why did Jesus get out of the grave? Why did he overcome why did he come to earth to become our high priest? Why did he show us what victory in Jesus could really look like? What's the point? Why did Paul say, I can do all things, everything that God calls me to do in this life. I am called to be what? An overcomer. I can overcome through Jesus. Why does 2 Corinthians chapter 9 say, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. Why does Psalms 46 verse 1 say, God is our refuge and our strength and always is ready to help us in times of trouble. If God didn't want us to have victory, why would he have said that? Why would the Bible be full of verses telling us that God is for us, that he is not against us, that he is with us, that he is our strength, that he is our refuge. He is our help in every present time that we need it if he didn't want us to have victory. Let me tell you why. And the one word is this. It's walls. It's walls. See, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse three says, we are human. How many of you are human today? Any aliens in the house? Okay, hope not. Okay, we'll talk about aliens sometime. Do you want me to talk about aliens sometime? I mean, the world's talking about aliens. Man, I, listen, I, I'll, I'll trip you out, okay? I'm telling you, the end of the world's here. I, I, you think I'm joking? I don't know, like, Pastor Jeff, every Sunday, the end of the world's coming. Uh, it is, Okay. It says, we are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds, strongholds, walls, right? Places in our mind, places in our heart that what? The enemy boxes us in. He traps us. He traps us with lies, and he traps us with doubts, and he traps us with wrong perspectives, and he traps us with culture, and he traps us with his perspective, and he traps us with what? Strongholds. Strongholds of what? Human reasoning. Mm. Verse five, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps us from knowing God. We capture those, what, rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey. So what, what is a stronghold? It's a place that the enemy designs to what? Keep Jesus out. So it's a place in your heart. We all have things, little places in our heart we go, I don't want anybody to touch that. I don't want anybody in that room. I don't want anybody to see that. I don't want anybody to see that dark place in my heart, that dark place in my mind. I don't want anybody to see that place that sometimes I doubt. I, want, I don't want you into this place. And the enemy, he thrives in those arenas. He thrives in those places, those strongholds where he goes, let's do whatever we can to keep Jesus far away from this. Let's keep Jesus far away from this trauma. Let's keep Jesus far away from this thought. Let's keep Jesus and his truth far away from this perspective because I own this part of your thinking. I own this part of your heart. I've built a stronghold. Strongholds are designed to trap us. Strongholds are designed 
so that we never really see victory in Jesus. So the reason that people believe that God doesn't have victory for everybody is because of this. It takes faith to knock down strongholds. It takes faith to knock down walls. It takes faith to walk in victory. It takes faith to see God do a miracle in your life. It takes faith. Did you hear that? It takes faith. It it doesn't just happen. God just, you know, we just live in such a culture. I think sometimes we think that God is some kind of genie that we just rub the lamp in worship one day and God just shows up and he just fixes everything. Well, God has a bigger plan for your life. Can I get an amen from anybody? Let me show it to you. We're gonna talk about four four points on, on how to see victory, but we're gonna see how God does this, okay? Point number one is this, don't stop on day four. Don't stop on day four. And and I know that years ago, Stephen Furtick preached a message that said, don't stop on day six. And and I love that. And I believe you don't want to stop one day before you're about to see the victory. What's the point of going through the six days and getting to the last day and giving up on the last day? I totally get that. But here's the problem. I don't think a lot of us even get to day six. If I'm being really honest, God, God speaks to us. He speaks a promise to us. And here's, I want you to understand something about the kingdom and how God works. When God speaks to you and he reveals truth to you and he reveals a promise to you, that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of the process. That's just the beginning of the journey. God's got a process of getting you to the place of blessing. So there's some days in between. Verse three said this, you and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. So why did God tell them to march around the city for six days before the seventh day? Because here's the deal. God always has purpose in what he's doing on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. He's got purpose. He's got a plan. Let me ask you this question, okay? How many of you know what the number seven represents in in biblical terms? Anybody know? Okay. I know, it's always a trick question. You're always so scared to answer. You're like, oh, God, I remember remember VBS and I said the wrong thing, (laughs) you know? It represents completeness, okay? God built the earth in six days, and on the seventh day, he rests because it was what? It was complete, Right? Now, let me ask you this. What does the number six, number six represent in biblical terms? It represents this. It represents man and human weakness. Okay? See, God had a plan for what? Those six days. There was purpose in those six days leading to the seventh day. Listen, you have to understand that God had a purpose in those six days, and that six days represents what? Will Israel choose God's plan or their own plan. Did you hear that? Will Israel, because remember, there was a generation before them that didn't want to walk in faith. There was a generation before them that didn't want to trust God the right way. There was a generation before them that failed and wasn't able to receive the promise. So these six days, there is a purpose in these six days. God's going, are you going to trust my plan or are you going to revert back to your plan? Because there was a generation before them they had what? They had a complaining spirit, right? They cried out for years, decades. God, save us, rescue us. God rescues them, brings them to the place that God has for them. He's leading, but they just have this complaining spirit where they go, God, why'd you bring us out here? Did you bring us out here to die? Well, take us back to Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Take us back to the water. Take us back to the food. Take us back to our bondage. They couldn't see what God was doing in their life. This was a generation that had a doubting spirit. Moses goes up the mountain. They get a little itchy, right? He didn't come back when they thought. Isn't that funny how we do the same thing with God? We're like, God, where are you? God, why aren't you operating 
right now in this moment that I think that I need you the most. Like, God, why haven't you solved this problem? God, why haven't you paid this bill yet? And God's going, just, just chill. I haven't forgotten about you. But instead of trusting the process, instead of trusting God, instead of trusting that Moses was going to come back, what did they do? They decided, you know what? We'll make up our own God. We'll create something of our own. Oh, man, doesn't that sound like us? We'll create up our, we'll make up our own process. We'll make up our own systems. We'll make up our own plans. We'll worship our own God. See, there was a generation before them. There was a generation that had more faith in Moses than in God. See, Moses, listen, you got to get this. got to see this. God wasn't their savior. Moses was their savior. And so there was purpose in what God was doing. There was purpose in those six days. God was testing them going, who do you place your trust in? Is your trust in you and your plans and your purpose or is your trust in what I'm doing? God had purpose in those six days. Galatians chapter six, verse nine says this. I love this verse. The Lord showed it to me a few weeks ago. I was just in a season where I was just doubting God and he goes, And the word says this, don't get tired. Oh, man, that's a good word right there. Don't get tired. Don't get tired of keep pressing into Jesus. Don't get tired of reading the word. Don't get tired of worshiping. Don't get tired of serving. Don't get tired of coming to church. Don't get tired of doing the good things that God's called you to do. Don't get tired. Said, don't get tired of doing good. Just at the right time. Did it say your time? Come on. It didn't say your time. It didn't say just in your time, your right time. It said just in the right time, meaning what time? God's time. In God's time, you will what? You'll reap a harvest of blessing. Woo! Come on, somebody. I want a harvest of blessing. I don't want a little blessing. I want a blessing that knocks down the walls and gives me the entire city. That's what kind of blessing I want. A harvest of blessing. If what? If what? You don't give up. There was purpose in those six days. Are you going to give up? You can give up on day four. You're going to give up on day five because, listen, the enemy is going to come in day one. He's going to come in day two. He's going to come in day four. He's going to come in day six. He's going to tell you you're an idiot. He's going to tell you you're wasting your time. He's going to tell you why are you reading this Bible plan. It's not going to work. It's not going to change your life. It's not going to change your minute, your, your marriage. He's got a plan to attack. But there's, there's this word that says if you don't give up, if you don't give up, Oh, I'm going to preach myself happy today. Come on. (laughs) Point number two, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. Jesus Jesus shared this little parable. Matthew 13, I can't go through the whole thing today. He said, listen, a farmer went out and planted some seed. What is the seed? It's the word of God. See, the word of God is getting planted into your heart. It's getting planted into your mind. It's getting planted into your soul. And isn't it amazing how much word gets planted into you now? You you hear it, you know, in songs. You hear it on the radio. You hear it at church. You see it on Instagram. You see it on Twitter. I mean, you see the word of God everywhere. The word of God gets planted, Jesus said. And as he scatters it across the field, who's the field? Where's the field? Some fell on the footpath, and the birds, the birds came and ate them. Okay, listen, I got to, listen, y'all want to hear a crazy bird story? Okay, li- listen, I was driving on 75 the other day. I was going up 75, and you know how you go, like, underneath one of those signs that says, like, Franklin or Middletown or something? I saw these big huge birds just on top. They look like vultures or something. They look like massive birds. And I, and I drove under this thing, and they flew off, and I promise you, they pooped purple poop onto my car. And I was like, what nasty thing that God created poops purple, bright purple poop all over my new truck right now? I rebuke these birds in Jesus' name, Okay. 
What do birds represent? This is what Jesus said it represents. The devil who comes and snatches what? Snatches the seed. What is the seed? It's the word of God. He comes and snatches the word of God that has been planted into your heart. Why? So you can never see victory. So you never find victory. Listen, I I need you to understand. Victory, victory is found in God's word. It is always found in God's word, in his truth. He says he comes and snatches it. So here's the question. How fast does God's promise get snatched from your heart? Is it before you even get to the car on Sunday mornings? Is it before you get to the restaurant on Sunday morning? Is it before you get to the house on Sunday? How fast is God's word getting snatched from your heart? And I look, I think it's a couple reasons. Number one, I think we're just so distracted. I mean, we walk out of church, our phone is blowing up, you got texts, you got calls, I mean, Instagram is telling you 40 things that you need to look at right now. You need to make sure what's going on with the weather. I mean, that you're just so distracted. Our phones, that, listen, our phones are just killing us. They're just killing us. They're just killing us. They're robbing us from God. They're robbing us from his word. Like, we're just so distracted with our kids' games. We got our own plans. We got coffee. We got to get to brunch. I know you're all hungry. I mean, I, listen, I'm hungry every Sunday, okay? Right? But you want to know one of the other big reasons, I think, is the problem? I think we just don't trust God's plan. It doesn't make sense. We just think, well, God's plan doesn't make sense. You want me to march around these walls for six days? And then on the seventh day, you want us to walk around it seven times, and then you want us to yell real loud? Like, that's your plan, God? Like, the God that created the universe, that's the plan that you've set up for my life for victory? I'm just going to yell at the end of seven days? I mean, come on. Think, literally put yourself there, okay? We, I mean, we know the story now, but put yourself in their shoes for a minute, Right? You'd be like, God, can we get a spreadsheet? Can we spreadsheet this out? Can, you know, can you give me some analytics? Can you give me some data? Can you tell me about the last group of people that shout? Was their shout loud enough? Was it too weak? What happened? You know what I mean? Like, we'd be like, I, I, need, to, I need to have a few coffee moments with some friends to discuss the shout and what kind of shout we're going to have, right? I mean, y'all, listen. You are all the most analytical people I've ever met on the planet. You know what I mean? Want to dissect every little thing. And then you come back and go, God, yeah, I don't know if we trusted that plan. (laughs) Can I get an amen from anybody? We just don't trust God's plan. Uh, Listen, (laughs) I'm not being mean, but listen, there are just some Sundays and I'm just preaching God's word and I'm thinking, man, the enemy is just snatching it out of the air. It's full of victory. It's full of life. But you're just thinking, man, this is, how? How, how could that be God's plan? I mean, I, I, I've argued, you know, I, I just don't even do it anymore. People are going to challenge me about, you know, God's blessing and tithing and giving, and, and they want to tell me it's, you know, God for God's people. I go, you can believe what you want to believe at this point. I, I know what the word says, and I know what it says, and it promises me that I will live a rich, abundant life if I trust him with my finances. If you don't want to, that's your choice. You just can't, you just can't mentally get there, right? It's like we just can't mentally get there. We're like, this is your plan, God? This is your plan? This doesn't make sense. You, you said to march around and, and then uh, make one long, verse 5, it said this, make one long blast with the ram's horn. Oh, the ram's horn. Great plan, God. You know? And we'll shout. We'll be real loud. And then you said these walls, these tall, fortified, stone, concrete walls. You know, they said that they used to race chariots on the top of these walls. They were that thick. They would race chariots. That, that these walls are going to fall down because, of, because we worship? Because we worship? Because we shout? God, that's your plan? Right? 
See, here's the deal. I think a lot of times if God came to us with this plan, we would be like, all right, God, look, day seven looks real sexy to me, okay? Let's just be really honest, okay? Like, day seven is looking really good, okay? I don't know about day one through six. That looks kind of boring. That looks kind of mundane. And But I really, really enjoyed day seven because day seven, you said you were going to do something incredible, incredible. Do you ever see that movie, The Incredibles, and the little, little boy goes, that's incredible. You're like, you're like, God, you're going to do something incredible on day seven. So, so you start worshiping God about day seven, right? So you like, here, let me play an old song for you, okay? Come on, put your hands together this morning. this all service and do this and then my mom would start running and I knew it was a good day my mom started running you were good right we're like day seven look what the Lord is gonna do on day seven Woo! day seven Y'all didn't know it was going to be a crazy day, did you? <laughs> Here's the problem. Day one through six aren't sexy. Right? Day one through six, you're like, really? Again? See, see, here's the problem. Listen, we think I have to walk in faith for a season and don't see God's blessing? Day one through six? I have to worship for a season, day one through six, with no instant gratification? Ooh, man. All of a sudden, we're not singing, look what the Lord has done. All of a sudden, we're singing, find me in the club. It's going down, right? (laughs) Find me in the trap. It's going down. Find me in the mall. It's going down, right? You're like, I need some instant gratification. I need to make myself feel good. Am I not lying? Am I not lying? Day one through six, we're like, man, there's no instant gratification in this. And we lose focus. We forget about what God has spoken to us. We forget that God has purpose in day four. We forget where God is taking us. We lose focus. You know what we do? We go, all right, God, I'm gonna be back up with you on day seven. (laughs) Right? Does it ring a bell? This is, I mean, think about your own life. Day, day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'll, I'll meet up with you on Sunday, God. I'll meet up on that day. Right? Point number three is walls. Walls. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish every depraved fantasy. I love that language. Depraved fantasy. Can I tell you when the enemy speaks to you, it is a depraved fantasy. He's just twisting what God has spoken. There's no life in it. There's never any life in what the enemy has for you. There's no joy in it. There's no peace. There's no victory. He has one. Listen, can you just hear me for a second? He's got one purpose to steal, kill, and destroy everything in your life. And he'll never stop. I mean, Mimi, Brenda, we call Brenda my mother-in-law, Mimi, okay? She has shared so many stories of friends that used to serve the Lord, faithfully serve the Lord. They served the Lord for 30 years, and all of a sudden, they, they are renouncing Jesus like crazy. He'll never stop. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life with depraved fantasies that says what? That opposes God. 
It says we break every attitude. How many know that sometimes you get some attitudes at God? Like, God, where are you? God, why, why haven't you shown up yet? Attitudes that raise up in defense of the truth of the knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought, every thought. See, I mean, the enemy is so good at bringing thoughts. He's so good at bringing thoughts that are not God's. And it says we insist that they bow down in obedience to Jesus. See, the enemy wants to build some walls in our life. He wants to build some areas in our thoughts, in our perspectives, in our heart, that we just, it just Jesus and his word and his truth never gets in. It's a stronghold. The word of God never penetrates these areas. And there's these walls that get built up. And he does it to all of us. The enemy is so good at building walls. The other day, it was a few weeks ago, I saw a picture of a church that I follow, and I follow lots of churches, and everybody's always trying to guess what I'm talking about, and I'll never let you know exactly what I'm talking about. I follow lots and lots of churches. And I saw this picture of a church that I follow, and they were, they were blessing some other churches with checks. They were $100,000 checks for their building. And, and I'll be honest with you, can I just, just be really frank with you? I had a moment where the enemy started to try to build a wall. He came in with his, with his language. That sure would be nice if God blessed you and elevate like that. Right? So that's what happens sometimes. He comes in with his lie, and he's just building a wall. He's trying to build a wall in between me and God. And he goes, it sure would be nice if somebody did that for you. Or he comes in with another lie, like, why isn't God doing that for you? God's doing it for somebody else, but he won't do it for you, right? Isn't that a good one? Like, you hear God's truth, and you go, oh, man, it's cool that God did it for that person, but I don't know if he would ever do that for me. Comes in with another lie. What are you doing wrong to not receive this kind of blessing? <laughs> He's so crafty. Jeff, you must be doing something wrong. You're not working hard enough. You're not, you're not loving your people enough. You're not a good enough pastor. You're just not good enough. Like, God can't, can't bless you because you're not good enough. Isn't it funny how it's all about me, how the enemy comes in? He, he makes it all about you, right? He came in with another lie. He said, you're just stuck. You're stuck. <laughs> and then here's, here's the best one. You're completely alone. Come on, how many times has the enemy told you, you're alone, nobody's with you, nobody's got your back, nobody's fighting with you, you're alone in this, you're alone. What's he doing? He's just building walls, fortresses, places to keep God out of, his truth, his wisdom, his thoughts. So, I, so I'm driving down the road, He's just, he's just lying to me. And I had to just make a quick decision in the car. I just had to make a quick decision. And I, I just quickly threw on some worship music. Because how many of you know that the worship music dispels the presence of the enemy? And so I just had to turn on some worship music. And so I turned on some worship music, and I'm just driving. I'm just driving, and I heard the Holy Spirit real gently say to me, if I did it for them, I'll do it for you. If I did it for them, you just aren't seeing this correctly. You're just not seeing it through God's perspective. You're not seeing it through God's eyes. You're seeing it through the devil and the walls that he wants to build in your life. You're not seeing this correctly, son. If you'll just trust me, I know you're in day four right now. I know you've been trusting me. I know you've been holding on. I know that you have dreams and I have dreams for you. I just felt him go, just hold on. Don't let the enemy build this wall. Don't let him build this fortress. Don't, let, don't keep me out. Invite me in. Bring me in. 
Bring me into what you need. Bring me into your need. Bring me in to your struggle. Bring me into these places you're not seeing victory. Bring me in because I got a plan. Point number four is this. Worship like it matters. Worship like it matters. We had man fest at my house the other night. Uh, we had over 50 men at my house. It was epic, okay? I mean, epic. I mean, we had guys, man, they came in full bangle outfits and gear. And, and listen, listen, I know, I know, Ray, I know I heard you were impressed by the food, okay? Because I, I, we were all impressed. I mean, we told the guys to bring an appetizer, man. We had more appetizers. We had pulled pork. We had brisket. I mean, we had like every man food you could possibly. Somebody brought this big, huge thing of sliders from White Castle. Man, they got destroyed. I mean, there was so much food there. We had, we had the game on three different TVs. We had guys upstairs, downstairs. And man, when the Bengals score, woo, man, I mean, you got these guys. I mean, I've never heard them say but two words, but they're real loud going, who day, who day, who gonna beat them Bengals, who day, right? You know, I'm like, oh, wow, you got a voice in you. There is, you can talk, right? Man, people's hands are going up. I saw two grown men hug each other in excitement, right? The Bengals scored a touchdown. Joshua 6, verse 20. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn. You want to come up? Man, we got a, we got a ram's horn today. No, we are, we are, we are not, we are not playing today, okay? When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're getting there, we're getting there. I need you to get this first. Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and Israel charged straight into the town and captured it. They completely, I love this part, verse 21, completely destroyed everything. Everything. I, I need you to understand something. I'm, I'm listening to the Old Testament right now. And like, I just saw this pattern in the Old Testament, like over and over again. When God would, when God would bring victory, he would destroy everything. And I kept thinking, why God, why are you destroying everything? Why does everything matter? He said, I'm destroying everything in the past. I'm just, because I'm creating something new. I'm building something new. And nothing of the past can be left. It's got to be me and it's got to be new. Now, I want you to see something. God never said, God never said to the people, hey, when they blow the ram's horn, I want you to be as quiet as a mouse, and I want you to shout with a little tiny, tiny shout of joy, just real quiet. No, God never said that. But yet we get into church and we hear somebody shout. We're like, what's going on? What's happening in here? Somebody shouted. Somebody said amen up in here. Somebody used their vocal cords that God gave them to worship the King of Kings and the Lord. What is going on in here? Right? We get freaked out. We're like, man, this is like a scary moment. Man, church was crazy today. Somebody shouted, amen, at the top of their lungs. Heaven forbid somebody got free. He says, shout. Shout like what? Shout like it matters. Why? Because your worship matters. Because here, let me tell you something. Oh, 
your choice in how you worship. Because I'm let me let me just say this. You can say, all, all the grown folks in here know this. You can say, I love you to your wife, just like, hey, I love you. I love you. You know what I mean? And they're like, you don't love me. You know what I mean? Like, why? Because they're reading your body language. They're reading your face. They're like, I love you. Like, no, you don't. Right? And this is how we treat God. We come into the house of God like, oh, God of the victory. How great you are. And you're like falling asleep. Right? Listen, it's not always about how you say something, right? It's not about the words that come out of your mouth. It's about your body language sometimes. It's about the voice that comes out of you. It's about the sound, the joyful sound that comes out of you. Because how you worship tells God how much you trust him sometimes. Sometimes your body, listen, there are so many times I don't feel like worshiping over there. I'm tired and I'm worn out and the enemy's beat me over the head all week, but I know that my worship matters. I know that my voice matters. I know that my shout matters. I know that how I worship, it matters. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to worship like it matters. We're going to shout like it matters. Right? Because it does matter. Listen, I know that you have walls in your mind. I know you have walls in your heart. I know that the enemy has been beating you over the head. I know that you have struggles. I know that you're going through some hardships, but I promise you, if you don't give up, if you'll trust the Lord, if you'll press on, he will bring a victory. He will knock the walls down for you if you'll just worship sometimes, if you'll just stand up and let your voice be heard. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. I want you to stand up. I told you, we're not done with service. We, we, we're good. Cracker Barrel, wait a minute, okay? Cracker Barrel's fine. Listen, we're going to blow this horn. And listen, come here. If you don't know, this is Bill Price. He's one of our elders. I love Bill so much. Oh, man. We're going to blow this horn, okay? And listen, when they blew this horn, okay, what, what it did, God would use the sound that came out of this horn, and he would confuse the enemy. He would confuse them. And um, so many times in the Old Testament, you would see the enemy. They would actually destroy themselves because they were so messed up. They were so confused. They were so downtrodden. They Sometimes when they, when they would blow that horn, it would just bring so much fear to the enemy's soul that he would just, they would just run in dismay. So listen, when we blow this horn, it's not just to blow a horn. We're blowing a horn, God's sound, His voice over your problems, over your situations, over your walls. And we're believing when we blow this horn and we shout that God is going to knock some walls down in your own soul, in your own life. Amen? Come on, who's ready to shout today? Who's ready to worship today?
Now come on, we're listen. We're gonna sing a new song, but we're gonna worship. Come on, bring these lights down for me. We're gonna worship like we've never worshiped before because we have a victory. We have been set free. We are victorious and we're gonna worship like we've already been set free. We're gonna worship like we've already seen the victory because we know our God is for us. He is not against us. He is with us. He is leading us and he is taking us to victory. Come on.
you go, I need a miracle. I need to see a miracle. I need some walls to come down in my life. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. The name above all names. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible. Come on, I want you to speak that out. Say, nothing is impossible. Nothing is too big for my God. Nothing is too big to heal. Nothing is too broke. Nothing is too dead. Nothing is too far gone. Come on. Come on, I want you to speak. Come on, I want you to speak life to these things. Come on, say in the name of Jesus, I command my marriage to be healthy. I command in the name of Jesus for my body to be well. I command in the name of Jesus for this pain to leave my body. I command in the name of Jesus for healing in my children. I command healing in their emotions. I command healing in our marriage that we have a prosperous, loving, kind, tender marriage. I command in the name of Jesus, life. I speak life over our finances. I speak life over our job. I speak life over my career. I speak life over our home. I speak life over our children. I believe that Jesus is the one who heals and restores and renews. And we put our faith in you. Lord, I release the miracle working healing power of Jesus upon homes, upon children, upon finances, upon careers, upon marriages. We thank you that you are destroying the walls that the enemy has built. You are destroying the strongholds in their mind and their heart. Come on, I want us to sing this bridge. There's, there's power in this bridge. Come on. Do we believe? Come on, do we believe? Do we believe that God still moves? Do we believe that God still heals? Do we believe that God still is a miracle working power? Do we believe that God's doing it in this city, in this time, in this house? Do we believe that this is a house of miracles that people are gonna find victory in life? There's a line in the song. I, I need you to catch this line in the song. It says, I fix my eyes on heaven. I fix my eyes on Jesus. I fix my eyes. I fix my thoughts. I fix my emotions. That's what it's saying. I'm gonna fix my thoughts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my emotions who's in charge. My emotions aren't gonna run me any longer. My thoughts aren't gonna run me any longer. I'm gonna fix my eyes on heaven. And then it says this, I'm gonna receive your vision. Your vision, God, for my life. Your vision for my future. Your vision for my marriage. Your vision, your vision. Come on, sing that out one more time. come down to the front listen if you we, we're gonna have our elder team come down to the front if you if you need 
prayer because we believe in the power of prayer. And I just believe that we're in a moment right now. I just believe that God is here. If you need prayer for something in your life, Megan, you can go down and pray. Jess, you can go down and pray. If you need prayer, I want you just to come on down. Just come on down, find one of our elders and agree. Listen, there is power when we agree in faith together. We see God move. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we love you. We worship you. We thank you for all that you've done here today. We thank you, God, for the walls that you're knocking down. We thank you in advance for the miracles, miracles that we're going to see, miracles, stories of your great goodness, stories of your power, stories of your healing, stories of your miracle working power. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for being here today and bringing us victory in life. We worship you. We honor you. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, if you need prayer, please come down for prayer. If not, we love you. We love you. Have an incredible, incredible week. We will see you next Sunday. But if you need prayer, please come on down. We love you. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of are full of faith. Yeah. You have our full